Hey YouTubers, today we're going to be fixing a sprinkler leak using one of these things, which is called a diaphragm. This is on a Weathermatic sprinkler system. But we can see that the sprinkler that usually pops up right here is closest to the where the valve is. It's probably only about five feet away. It has this wet spot. So that's one of the possible symptoms. So here's another sprinkler head <clears throat> that's pretty close to where the valve is and that one's leaking. The ones further away, we don't see that wet, that wet area. But other things you may notice is that your sprinkler may not turn on when you activate it or it may um, have other symptoms where it's not running properly. Eventually, it could probably take a long time, maybe 15 years, but these get little little holes in them and that creates these symptoms. So what we're going to do is go ahead and activate one of our um, sprinklers and then we're going to turn off the main water supply. So I just turned on one of the sprinklers so it's going to be active and then I'm going to go up on our hill where we have the water valve for this whole sprinkler system and I'm going to turn it off. I'm, I'm letting water flow through one of the sprinklers though as I turn it off so it takes pressure off of the system so I can fix this. One of the sprinkler is actually uh, currently running. I'm going to turn off this main supply, cut off the water, and that's going to take the pressure off of the different valves. So I'm shutting off the water supply. They're fully turned off. I don't want any kind of leak. And now I go to the sprinkler valve itself that's causing the trouble. So here's the original diaphragm. It's probably over 20 years old and it's just starting to get a little tear in it. Here's the new one. So the new one doesn't have uh, this metal feature but it's been replaced by a rubber piece so it's kind of an improved design. So we're just going to use some sockets to open it up and then we'll pop this in. Use a flathead screwdriver to get the cap off. Be careful, sometimes spiders in here, but little spiders are harmless. Sometimes you can get black widow, so just be a little cautious. Got that off, we're going to clean out this area, and then we're going to be removing this cap by removing a series of bolts here on the perimeter. We've got the area cleared away, and there's just four little bolts that we want to get out. So we might get some leaking here, but we got rid of most of the water pressure. So we're going to go in there and just take these out. About, about an inch long. A little water coming out. So it's good just to let that water dissipate before you fully remove it. And that'll just keep contaminants from leaking into the valve assembly. So just got enough to let some water out, but I'll let that dry up for a few minutes and then I'll come back. The top off, still got a little more water coming out, pull out the spring, and then diaphragms below that. Pull out the old one. There we go. I'm going to be replacing this one. See, most of the water is dissipated, just letting it sit for about half an hour. I'm going to go ahead and use paper towels to get the remnant out of there and make sure there's no contamination. So we're going to put the new diaphragm in. It has a little arrow that points toward uh, the way the water is going to flow. It's pretty cool. It's a little notch here. It's going to point that way. If you look at the valve assembly on the Weathermatic, it's kind of got that same thing. It's got a little protrusion. We're going to match that. We're going to put this side down. And there's a little ridge here. It'll fit right into this, this groove in the plastic body. 
I'm gonna put that back in. Make sure it sits down nice and flat. Line up this little guy. Get that little notch lined up. Put the spring back in. Goes on our spring. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a pull. Increase its springiness. Put that right there in the middle. All right, and then this guy's going to go on top of that. You want to have the solenoid matching up with the notch side of the valve, the valve body. This is going to go around the spring. Line it all up. Gently push it down in. Okay. I could feel it kind of click into place. Sits down nice. Add these screws. We're just going to put them in with some just finger tension initially. We're going to tighten them up, kind of like we would do it on a on engine head in a sequence. So we're not going to load up like this one here super tight first. We're just going to get it just snug and then we'll put the other ones in and then we'll, we'll gradually tighten them. Okay, you got them all in finger tight. I'm going to set this clutch for a 10. <clears throat> now I'll do one corner at a time. That one's good. Let's come over to this one. That one's good. Let's come over to this one. So we're doing kind of a cross hatch sequence. Go corner, corner, corner. I'm going to go to 14 now. This one. Or this one. This one. Alright, that's good. I'll turn on the water up top, the main valve, and I'll come down here and just check for leaks. If these aren't tight enough, I'll see a little bit of water leaking out. You can see that one valve is no longer as wet. It's just it's a little bit moist. So I'll go ahead and turn on the main valve and see if this gets worse or if it just keeps getting better. If it doesn't get any more wet, we know that that diaphragm solved the problem. Turn that main valve back on. We'll go to see if there's any leak. I don't see any leak at this point, so I think that did the trick. Watching our video and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. And also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you. Feel free to contact me at the email listed below which is scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com.